guys, I'm Laura Vitali, and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen, I want to share with you my recipe for a good quality white all-purpose sandwich bread. Now, this request, this been requested here in Laura in the Kitchen for a really long time, and it was especially highly requested when some of you saw me make this on my vlog channel, on my vlog. Um, so I figured I'd share the recipe with you since I am, um, I'm excited to start bringing you some more bread recipes. I'm hoping to do one weekly, but I'll do my best. The ingredients for this recipe are a few of them, and they're really basic ones. You'll need some bread flour, granulated sugar, some salt, some non-fat dry milk powder, some warm water, some vegetable shortening that I've melted, a little bit of yeast, and a little bit of sugar. Let's get started on activating our yeast. Now, I always add a pinch of sugar to uh, my yeast, to my warm water, because it I feel like the yeast gets fed off of the sugar, and um, I don't know, it just feels like it works best. So I'm just going to set that aside until it can foam up a little bit and activate. And in the meantime, you want to make sure you get all your dry ingredients measured out and ready, which I clearly have, and you want to give this a really, really good stir. Now you can find dry milk powder online. I have actually been finding it in my grocery store nowadays, but I used to not be able to find it in my grocery store, and I always just bought it online. I buy most of my stuff on Amazon, like I've mentioned before. Um, it's a great place to sort of find things that you can't normally find in your local grocery store. So. You can also substitute all-purpose flour if you don't have bread flour. Uh, however, I feel like the bread flour just gives you a much more tender interior, um, but it's completely up to you. You can use all-purpose flour, but I just feel like this is much better. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'll just take this out and get all of my ingredients, my dry ingredients in my, the bowl of my standing mixer. I'm going to make this in my standing mixer just because I feel like it's a lot easier and it's going to knead all by itself with no help from me whatsoever. However, I am going to use this bowl to allow my bread, my, my dough to rise in, so I'm just going to add a little bit of vegetable oil. You can usually uh, use a spray, and then just with a pastry brush, brush all over uh, the sides, because as this rises, you want to make sure it's not sticking to anything. As you can see, my yeast has foamed up really, really nicely. You can really smell it, which is really important, and I'm just going to get it all out of here into my bowl with my dry ingredients along with my vegetable shortening. Now if you can't find vegetable shortening, you can always use some butter, but the vegetable shortening is going to give you a lot more of a light texture instead of a heavy one. But the butter will taste delicious, so really it's up to you. Now what I'm going to do, but the recipe does call for vegetable shortening. I'm just going to, what am I thinking, I'm going to plunk that on there, put my little dough attachment, dough hook attachment, and I'm going to mix this up and let it knead for about three minutes or so, or until it comes together in a nice dough. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's there. All right, as you can see, all the flour has been incorporated in there, and it's it's going to be a really sticky dough, but that's quite all right. Don't fear. It works, whoops, it works out every single time. I'm just going to take my my little brush out, and then I just... Use my little plastic spatula, plunk my dough in there. I just make sure to brush the very top with a little bit of vegetable oil so it doesn't form a crust. You can always pat that on there too. Take some of the vegetable oil from the sides. Okay, now what I'm going to do is wrap this with some plastic wrap. And I'm going to put this somewhere warm to double, to, well, it, it should be like twice and a half the size that it is now. The best place for me is always in my microwave above my stove. Obviously, I'm not going to turn my microwave on. And it's especially fabulous if you've got your oven turned on cooking something else in there because then it really gets the job done a lot faster. So depending on how hot the place is that you're keeping it at, it could happen in an hour to two hours. So you're going to have to keep an eye on it. I'm just going to wrap it on this side as well because this is a pretty big bowl. And I'm just going to let this rise until it's uh, nice and plumped up. My dough has risen beautifully. What I have here is a 9 by 5 inch loaf pan. I just sprayed that with some nonstick spray. You can also use a little vegetable oil. And I just have a little bit more bread flour. I'm not going to add too much. I'm just going to add enough to my, work, my counter here, to my work surface, so it doesn't stick. But I don't want to add too much because it, what I don't want to do is make this uh, bread too dense by adding a lot of flour. I'm going to keep the flour to a minimum and then just sprinkle a little bit on the top. You don't have to use too much force, you just be gentle. 
And all I'm doing is just rolling this into a log, and as you can see, that happened really, really quickly. And you just want to make sure that your seam is at the bottom. And then I just kind of, you don't have to do the step, but I always do. I just kind of pinch the two ends together. Bring your loaf pan over. Put that right in there. I like to fan it out just a bit. Well, flatten it, not fan it. And then what I do is I just take, whoops, a lint-free kitchen towel, put it on the top, put it back into the microwave. Obviously, like I mentioned, the microwave is not on, and you're gonna let this rise until it's come up a little bit above your baking pan, and then we'll be ready to bake it. That is what you are looking for. Now you wanna make sure at this point you have your oven preheated to 350. This baby is gonna bake for about 40 minutes or so. Check on it every 10 minutes. If halfway through you feel like your bread's getting really, really brown and you still have you know, another 20 minutes to go and you're afraid it's gonna burn, tent it with a little bit of aluminum foil. It's all good, it's okay, it'll be fine. I'm gonna pop this in there and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. I am so excited because there's nothing, absolutely nothing, not even Nutella. I will never repeat myself on that one again, but there's nothing better than homemade bread, nothing. My bread baked for 40 minutes. Now, I did end up covering this with aluminum foil in the last 10 minutes because it was developing too much color. And I've let it cool as much as I can handle because it is warm, it smells good, and I want to eat it. But you really should wait for this to cool completely. Now, I know I'll get a lot of questions on whether or not you can use whole wheat flour for this instead of white. I'm going to do future videos on like light wheat and whole wheat because there are different steps and different ingredients that are going to uh, need to be added to it. So let's go ahead and cut this open so that you can see what it looks like. Now I want to sh just share with you a really quick, first of all, how gorgeous is that? But I want to share with you a really quick tip. This has a slight, not a hard crust, but a really slight, slight crust. If, however, you want your, the top of your bread to be really, really soft, what you do is you just take a piece of paper towel, you dampen it in some water, and you kind of rub the very top surface of your bread, and it will keep it really, really soft. This, however, I like to keep it this way because it's easier to cut and I feel like it holds a sandwich better. Either way, it's fine. You can see it's beautiful, it's fully cooked, it's really soft on the inside, it's got a beautiful, beautiful crust around it. I'm going to give this one a try, this slice here. This smells amazing. Mm. It's delicious. I mean, there are some things, oh, so good. There are some recipes you need in your repertoire, some basic recipes that you can play up a million and one ways. This is my base for, for my cinnamon um, raisin bread, which I'll share a recipe here really, really soon. It's just you can do so many different things with it, and you can always make a few different loaves at a time, a few loaves at a time, keep them in the freezer, and you have fresh baked bread on hand at all times. I hope you've enjoyed spending time with me. Go to lara in the kitchen.com to get this recipe, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.